Hey class, so for this exercise 1.6, we are going to be modeling a 3D cake. So in this part one, we're going to be extruding the base, so you'll get lots of practice with that. We're going to add some holding edges using our multi-cut tool, and we're going to add the cake and the frosting. All right, to start, I'm just going to create a polygon cylinder, and I'm going to click on that option box to make sure I can change the number of axes and also make sure there's cap divisions in the top of my cylinder. That's going to make it easier to um, adjust anything on the cap. I'm going to scale it down using my one direction scale tool. And then I'm just going to start um, moving and then extruding these center uh, faces. So to select them, you can try this paintbrush select wand. You can see I tried it it wasn't that great, so I just ended up clicking. Um, I have mixed results on that, but it's nice to select multiple faces at once. Once I have all my faces selected, I'm going to scale them down using that center scale um, all direction tool, and I'm also going to move them up. This is going to form the base of the pedestal of my um, cake stand. So my first extrusion, I'm gonna press Command E, press W to move it up, and then R to scale it down. So again, extrude, move it up or out. Extrude, move it up. Extrude, and this time I'm scaling out and moving up. Extrude, one more time. I'm gonna be doing this a lot. And this time I'm scaling it down through the center. For these extrusions, when you're scaling, you almost always want to be um, using that center uh, yellow box that's changing in all directions. And then when you're moving, you're always using that blue arrow. So extrude and out. Extrude again and up. and I'm just adjusting the scale here. And for this, you can make this uh, pedestal shape anything you want it to be. You can try a couple times just to see what kind of forms you get. Or you can use reference to build your, um, your pedestal. So extruding and then moving up. Scaling down, extruding and scaling down. And this is going to form like a lip around the base. So I'm extruding one more time. I'm moving those faces down and into the plate base. And then I'm doing that a couple times to add some holding edges in there. And voila, we have our first cake base. So if I select this by object and then press three for smooth preview, you can see it is smoothing quite a bit. So what I really want to do right now is add some holding edges so that when it smooths, it maintains some of those nice corner edges. The best way to do that is to use my multi-cut tool and hold down control. So what I'm doing here is holding down control and clicking kind of close to the top edge. So you're gonna be clicking on one of these vertical edges up and down. So close to each of the edges. Now the closer you get to the edges, the sharper the corners will be once you press three to smooth. So you can see now the difference is that it's holding that nice lip at the bottom of my uh, model. So I'm gonna do that a couple more times. This one I ended up taking back, but I do want to show you what it does. So this time I decided to click underneath and on top. Now if I press three, you can see it did a good job, but it's kind of smoothing on the outside rather than actually holding the beveled edge on the, the lip here. So instead I'm just going to add a couple holding edges on these two faces instead. And now you can see it's got a little more hold to that um, center ring. All 
All right, next I'm going to add a few more holding edges to this little lip. And um, when you're adding holding edges, always consider that Maya smooths between three points. So anytime you want to have a sharp corner, you need three separate edges or points um, in order to hold that sharp corner. If you want super soft corners, you only need two. So I did add some extra edges on the inside here of here when I was modeling. So if you want to add some multi-cuts there, that would be great. And then I'm just adding some multi-cuts to the top. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I can still make some adjustments though. So if I turn off wireframe on shaded and deselect all, I can really get a preview. I'm looking at this thinking it's probably a little chunky for what I was going after. So to select this entire edge loop, I'm just going to double click on it. And I'm gonna select all four of those edge loops. And then I'm gonna use my center scale to um, scale these down so they're a little more elegant and just adjust those proportions. Now, if I wanted to, I could also use this floating two direction scale box. So it's like the little plane that's floating out there. And that actually turns out pretty nicely. So I'm gonna use that one and deselect. Now I just wanna add a little bit more height to the bottom base here. So I'm just going to click on these three and move them up. There we go. So I think that's got like a nice sturdy base to it and it is looking good. For yours, you can make it any shape you like. Definitely check on the web for some reference and have fun with it. Okay, next we are going to, I'm just gonna label this as the cake stand. And then I'm going to put it on its own layer. So in the channel box layer editor at the bottom here, if you select an object, you can create a layer from selected. And I'm just gonna name it stand. You can turn off the visibility of this layer and turn it back on again by pressing this little V key. And that's gonna come in handy later when we're um, working on our frosting. So now I'm just gonna add a new cylinder, make sure it has 16 axis divisions and two cap divisions. And I'm going to move, scale, and rotate this up. And you can pick any kind of shape that you like. I was kind of going for one of those like more um, taller, thinner um, cakes. And I did move my pivot point, so remember that's pressing D and then moving it down with point snap turned on. And because it was so close to other objects in the scene, I really did have to um, move it around a little bit um, before I could snap it to the bottom. And then I can just move and rotate. So now I'm gonna add a couple holding edges. So I'm gonna select my object, go to my modeling toolkit, and um, you can also go to multi-cut here or through the, the modeling toolkit. For the base, I want it quite flat, so I'm just adding one little holding edge at the very bottom. But for the top of the cake, I do want it quite round. So I'm actually holding my, creating my holding edge further down, so that'll create like kind of a nice drop off. There we go. So the placement of those holding edges really does make a difference. The closer to the edge, the sharper it is. The further from the edge, the softer the corner is. So now I'm just going to um, rename my cake in the outliner and I'm going to duplicate it. So you could use Command D or the Shift and the Move tool and this new layer, I'm gonna call it frosting. I'm going to make sure that the, um, I'm gonna hide the visibility of the other objects and make sure the frosting layer that I just created is not hidden. So I'm gonna remove that from the hidden layer. 
And this is my second time doing this, so the name of this frosting layer does change. But we are going to use our multi-cut tool again to make our frosting. So we use that cake base, and um, now we're going to cut some frosting from it and extrude it. So I'm going to add a few um, more multi-cuts here to just give me some room to play with. I'm pressing one to turn off smooth preview. I find that the multi-cut, the way I'm going to be using it, um, works best when you turn that off. So press control and click and drag. And now I'm going to be using just clicking, no control, to try and cut some frosting out of these surfaces. Now it's really important that um, you try and make your cuts in the center of your faces or in just anywhere in the faces rather than at the um, corners of your faces. It'll make it easier um, later when we're trying to get rid of some end gons that we've created. And then I'm basically trying to make that like drip frosting. So um, just kind of clicking anywhere for somewhat of a random pattern and you'll see how it develops. And just avoiding any of the corners on the existing um, shape. And so you just kind of click on the actual lines themselves. And unfortunately it does show you the other side of the multi-cut, so it gets a little confusing. And this takes a little bit of time, but just click, click, click. In a somewhat random pattern. And when you're done, you're going to click on your starting point and press enter. It's really important to hit return or enter. That will create the actual cut. Now I'm going to um, delete all the extra faces. And so if you click outside of the model and drag, hold down and drag, you can select um, you know, an entire row of extra faces, or you can just click and press shift on the um, extra faces and then press delete to delete them. So I'm just getting rid of a few of these. Now it's really important, you can see I have created some end gons. So end gons are faces with more than four sides. So I'm gonna use my multi-cut tool to divide those up. So you can see here there's five. So I'm just gonna start at a corner and then um, multi-cut it, so click and then click to divide the face in half. And that creates two faces with four sides. So anywhere I see that, I'm gonna start at a corner and then divide the other side. And press enter when you're done. Make sure you're pressing enter. And just taking care of these end gons now um, will make a big difference in your topology. And it's not so important when you're first starting out, but it's good practice to make sure you don't have any end gons just in case you want to use this in Unreal Engine or um, any other kind of program like that. So again, um, starting with a corner and then just clicking across. Um, you can see I do have triangles and I have some quads spaces. All right, so now I can extrude this out. So I'm going to select by object click and then use that blue arrow to extrude upwards. If your model for some reason does turn all black, that means that the um, normals have been reversed on your model. So you can fix that by going to mesh display and reverse. And then I'm gonna add some holding edges here. So um, clicking close to these, um, the thickness. We'll add um, a little bit of holding edge so that it doesn't um, turn out completely smooth. And finally, um, I'm going to make a few little adjustments on this layer, so I'm, I'm renaming it because um, this was my second attempt. I'm gonna center my pivot point and I can scale it down or scale it up, however you like. And then I'm going to use my soft selection and turn on vertice select. 
and for some reason it's not letting me so I'm just gonna use my um, select tool now turn on vertices selection and turn on my move tool I turned on soft select if you hold down B and click and drag left and right you can adjust the size of the soft selection fall off and I'm just going to make some of these a little shorter and some of them a little longer and the soft selection just ensures that um, the movements that I'm doing um, have like kind of a smooth edge to them and um, have a nice drop off and this part's optional but um, it can be nice to add a little more contrast to your different edges because it's a bit unpredictable to um, when you're first multi-cutting to know exactly how it's going to turn out now when you're clicking and dragging make sure that you're only clicking and dragging the side that you want to affect it's easy to click and drag and select the side that you can see in the back side as well so all right and so now that looks pretty good so we're done with this video and you can move on to part two when you're ready thanks